So I've been learning a lot about cluster analysis lately, and I thought I'd make some videos to log what I've been learning. I'm not an expert yet, uh, or not an expert at all, um, but I figured I'd make these videos in order to help others along the way who are trying to learn this as well. So there are a few different types of cluster analysis. There's hierarchical, um, and then there's a non-hierarchical, which would be like k-means, which I'll make a video on shortly. And then there's the two-step approach, which I've already made several videos on. And that is a combination of both hierarchical and non-hierarchical. In this video, I'm going to show you a hierarchical approach. So I have some data here. This is real data on burgers at various restaurants, Arby's, Burger King, McDonald's, Dairy Queen, Sonic, etc., McDonald's. And let's say I want to know how these burgers and burger groups are related to each other. I could do a hierarchical cluster analysis. Go to Analyze, Classify, Hierarchical. And then let me just throw all these out for a sec. What I'd like to do is I'd like to use a certain number of variables to create these clusters in order to determine the groupings of burgers. So I'd like to group burgers based on calories, uh, total fat, how about sodium, you know, all these terrible things. Uh, that, that's probably good for now. So I want to see where the awful burgers are, where the good burgers are, um, in terms of how these group. Now, I'd like to label each of these cases by the sandwich name. So I'll be able to see where each burger uh, groups. You'll see how that works in a sec. Now, under the statistics options, there's the agglomeration schedule, which might be handy. We'll see. And there's a proximity matrix. Now, I don't typically use this, but you could use this if you wanted to export the, the cluster analysis into a more uh, biological type of software like Mega or Clustal or um, any of those clustering softwares for biology and then you could create all sorts of really cool phylogenetic trees. SPSS will create for you a dendogram um, and that's the extent of, of their phylogeny trees. I'm going to not use a proximity matrix. Um, as for cluster membership I'm going to say uh, you could have a single solution or a range of solutions and so I'm going to say I want a three cluster solution, or if you wanted, you could do minimum of two, maximum of four. You know, let's run with that, and I can show you what that does. Continue plots. I would love to see a dendrogram that shows us the sort of ancestral kind of relationships amongst the burgers. Uh, I have not been able to figure out what this icicle chart really means, so I'm going to say none. And continue method. A lot of stuff here. There are several different methods for conducting a hierarchical cluster analysis. Two of the most popular are the centroid and the nearest neighbor. There's also the Ward's method. Ward's method uh, has a lot of flaws, but one thing it's good at is creating roughly equal clusters. So you could have a cluster with 20 burgers in it, another cluster with 18 burgers in it, another cluster with 21 burgers in it. Very roughly equal groupings. Whereas in some of these others, like um, Centroid, which is the one I'm going to use, uh, you could have a cluster of two burgers or one burger um, and a cluster of 50 burgers, all in the same cluster analysis. Now, when using the Centroid clustering method, the best interval measure is actually the squared Euclidean distance. There are reasons for this. If you'd like to know why, go read Chapter 9 of uh, Joseph Hare's Multivariate Data Analysis book. And then I'm going to standardize. I have you can see here I have calories, which are measured in calories, and fat, which is in grams, and sodium, which is in milligrams. And these are on vastly different scales. You can see calories in this column here in the hundreds. Go look at sodium in the thousands, um, and then total fat in the tens and teens. So these are on vastly different scales. So I'd like to standardize them to between negative one and positive one. And hit continue. And there's also an option to save membership numbers. So, for example, this burger, number three, Beef and Cheddar Classic from Arby's, that's going to land in a certain cluster, and each cluster is going to be numbered. If I want to know which cluster number Beef and Cheddar Classic belongs to, I can save that solution, and it will save it as, as a new variable column. Uh, right now, I'm not going to save that. So I'm just going to cancel here. 
I want both statistics and plots, and I want to cluster by cases. Hit OK. It's going to think about it. Right now I have my data split by uh, restaurant, so it's going to do an analysis for each restaurant. Let me just come down here to whoa, Wendy's. Here we go. Here's Wendy's. All right. In the agglomeration schedule, we learn how much new information is provided by each additional cluster. Now, one thing you can do to see if this is even useful is you can double click it and then highlight all of the coefficients here. Right click it, go to create graph and go to line graph. And this creates something like a scree plot. And we can see that these burgers actually don't cluster very well until you get out to uh, 22 clusters uh, where it jumps up and we add a lot, a lot of new information. Uh, so that's unfortunate. Uh, typically what we'd like to see, as far as I understand it, is a sharp increase early on and then a tapering off. So just the opposite of what we're seeing here. Uh, sort, of like a, sort of like a scree plot for a factor analysis. Here we asked for minimum of two clusters, maximum of four clusters. So it gives us one, two, three, uh, or two, three, four numbers of clusters. And then it tells us for each burger, which cluster number does it belong to. Um, you can see that there are differences. So if we go to number 245, the double stack, um, I think that's from Wendy's. The four, if you look at a four cluster solution, the double stack would end up in cluster four. If you look at a three cluster solution, it'd end up in cluster three. And if you look at a two cluster solution, it would end up in cluster one. So that's what that'll do for you. Now here's the dendrogram. I think this is pretty cool stuff. This tells you uh, many things. It tells you how many different clusters we could observe. Right now, we could say that there are two clusters. You have this one right here, which is just one burger, the triple, ooh, the three quarter pound triple hamburger, so the death burger, which is just way outside the norms in terms of sodium, calories, and total fat, is my guess. So it's a class of its own, a cluster of its own. And then you have everything else. Or we could say we have one, two, three, four, and then maybe this one is a fifth cluster. And we can also see how things relate. So this cluster right here relates to this cluster more than it relates to this cluster. And then this cluster relates to this cluster more than it relates to these clusters, and so on. So there are multiple levels, hence the name hierarchical, um, multiple levels of clustering. And to interpret this, we can just look at um, what it is. Let me copy this, go paste it in a Word document so we can zoom in a little bit better. Let's see, paste as picture. And there we go, we can see it a little bit better. Now, in this first, in this first cluster here, we can see we have grilled chicken go wrap, another wrap, a little burger for kids, a junior burger, another small burger, another kids burger, junior burger. These are the small, low calorie burgers. We have chicken, chicken, and then another junior. So those are all the small burgers. Let's go down. They're closely related to chicken, 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 and another junior. Mm, this makes sense. So we have small burgers, relatively small burgers. Let me scroll down. Now we have this group of three. We have the Ranch Club Ultimate Chicken Grill, the Pretzel Pub Sandwich Homemade Chicken, and the Quarter Pounder. So these are slightly heavier. Then we move down to these, this next group. We have the Son of Baconator and the Baconator Single, the Half Pounder Double Hamburger. These are big burgers, and they're more re related to this cluster right here than they are to these guys up here. And then, of course, you have your massive monster death burger the three quarter pound triple hamburger which is just so beyond everything else in terms of sodium calories and fat so that's how you would read a hierarchical uh, an analysis a dendrogram or a phylogenetic tree um, and that gives you information about the relationships between burgers and groups of burgers or whatever unit of analysis you're using typically it won't be burgers it'll be more like customers or companies or cars or something like that and that's the extent of my knowledge on hierarchical cluster analysis at this point if i learn more i'll make another video